Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. Um, you can also find me here on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and a variety of other platforms when you search my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, today I'm here to talk to you about um, how I use scarves and the stretchy band and xylophone um, when I talk with students a little bit about the ocean and ocean exploration. And I'm going to talk a lot about one of my favorite songs um, from this book. I know it's backwards, but um, SOS Songs of the Sea by Lynn Kleiner from um, her uh, publications, Music Rhapsody. Um, Music Rhapsody comes out with some really awesome books and resources. Um, and this is, I think this is the first one I ever bought. I went and saw Lynn Kleiner at um, Kansas Music Educators a couple years ago and loved all of her stuff and bought this book right away and I've, I've used probably everything out of it. <laughs> but The Waves is probably one of my favorite songs. So I wanted to just show you how I use it um, and explain a little bit about what I do. But this book is super, super great and I'll post a link in the comments when this video is over. But it's called SOS Songs of the Sea. Um, anyway, so the first thing, I, I like this time of year doing songs to help calm kids down a little bit because with testing and with craziness and field trips and sickness and whatever, they can be a little crazy. So I like doing songs that calm them down a little bit. Um, and also challenging them because a lot of through the year I do songs that are exciting or moving and I like to give them songs that are a little bit more expressive and challenge what they're doing. This is a, a lesson I do with second grade. Um, and so it's a stretch for them, but it's a good stretch. So I, I start by telling them like, I have this song and it's a song about the ocean, it's a song about waves, and I really wanted to try it out with you guys. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's a song about waves and you know, when waves go through the ocean, they go in and they go out and they go up and they go down. And um, can you take your hands and you can try, what does it look like if a wave were gonna go up? You can do, you know, going up and how about down? And you can go down and you can say in. And we usually do this when we're seated in a big circle. So then when they, when they say in, they all immediately reach in to the circle, which is great. And you can use that again later. And then they go out and they go out like that. And you can say, oh man, that's so good. Can you go up and down and in and out? And the slower you are um, and the more intentional you are, the more that they will be slow instead of going up and down and in and out. And then I say, you know what, that is so good, but I thought, instead of just doing waves with our hands, and I usually do that a couple times with our body first, instead of just using our hands, I thought I would try these. And I pull out um, my basket of scarves. And I say, I've got this scarf. Oh, and it reminds me of the ocean, watch. And I can go just like the waves, I can go up and down, and I can go in and I can go out. Did you see how I did that? Now, when I do the wave, is the wave going slow or is the wave going fast? And they're like, it's going slow. And I go, yeah, because if I go fast, it doesn't look like a wave anymore. It looks like the wind. I don't want the wind. I'm talking about the waves. And that's like my like tri trick to get them to go slower because they don't want it. But <laughs> that's what I say. So it's more like the, the waves than the wind. And they say, oh, that's so good. And I show them what it would look like to go up and down and in and out. I haven't handed anything out to them. I'm just demoing. And I say, but you know what? What if you were like on a cruise ship and you went to like an island? I don't know that the waves would look like that. The waves there might look a little bit more like this. And I pull out the light color. And the waves would go up and go down and go all around. They go in they go out they go all about and I'm, by the way that's in the song i'm just i'm prepping them every time i do this example i'm i go over those actions again so when we get to it in the song they're ready for it and i say that's so good but what if we leave the island and we go out into the deep ocean maybe the deep ocean at nighttime where the whales and the giant squid are probably it would look more like this and i say and those waves would go up and go down all around they go in they go out and all about did you notice boys and girls how sometimes I use both of my hands and sometimes I use one hand the cool thing about these waves these scarf waves I could hold on the edge I could hold on a corner I could even if I wanted I could lay it out and I could grab in the middle and I could do a wave like that there's so many things you can do 
Uh, but if I just use these normal colored waves, that'd be sort of boring. What if we went into Florida to like the Everglades where the alligators are and we had waves there or maybe a pond or something? Probably the waves would look more like this, wouldn't they? There'd be moss on them or algae, things like that. And you can, you know, I do the, a little bit of the process again and I show them the green wave. What if we were astronauts and we went to Mars? Maybe our waves would look more like this, wouldn't they? Because we would discover an ocean on the red planet where the waves are red. And then I say, what if we went to, and I have to start making things up. What if I went to um, Candyland? Probably the waves would look maybe a little bit more like these pink scarves and they go up and they go down and all around. What if we went to, and right now in Georgia, I could say, what if we went outside and there's the pollen and we go up, you know, I, you could do whatever you want. But one of the reasons I do this is one, to get them to think about different things, to think that waves could be made of other things. A wave on Mars would be red. A wave with algae would be green. I get them to think differently, but also I don't have a whole basket of blue scarves. And so I have all these multicolored scarves. So this one gets something differently, which was what I want them to do in the first place. But also then nobody's gonna be like, I don't have a wave colored scarf. Yeah, you, you do. It's just maybe not, you know, maybe it's a wave uh, somewhere else. And so as I'm handing them out, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hand out and probably you're not gonna get the same color as your neighbor and that's okay. And if you get a color that you're like, hmm, I don't know where this would be. Try and see if where you think this wave might be. It may not be in the ocean. It may be at, you know, a cotton candy factory, or maybe it would be, you know, maybe it's the land of the Lorax. I don't know. You, you decide. And so then I hand them out and then we try the song. I'm gonna play just a little bit of the song so you can hear it. Um, it's a slower song and kids have a little bit of a hard time with that at first, but I just remind them and I model. I model, 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 model. And you can hear sort of what, what happens in the song. So I go nice and slow. I also love this song because it has such cool accompaniment with barred percussion. I love it. Oh, and one more thing. I say, if she's not singing, you can make your wave look however you want. You can keep it slow, go up, go down. But when she sings the instructions, you got to do what she says. Pull, at that point, if we're in a circle, it sort of pulls out of the circle, which is cool. So then the song has a little bit of an interlude. And what I usually do at that point is I say something like, as we're doing our waves, and they're doing really a pretty good job at this point, I say, what would it look like if it were the waves at nighttime? And I say, Dion, can you go shut off the lights or whoever? And I have them shut off the lights. And the second time through, it's the same thing, basically. We just do it with the lights off. And they love that. They love that. And so um, we do our waves. We do, we do it basically just one time. And then at the very end of the song, she repeats, the waves go rolling all about, the waves go roll. So they just keep going over and over. So then I say, take your wave and let it slowly land on the shore in front, or on the sand in front of you or whatever, and then let go. So we're in our circle and all the scarves are just sitting in front of us. And in that same lesson, then I say, oh, that was so good. But you know what? I can see each individual wave. I can see an orange wave. I can see a green wave. I can see a blue wave. I can see all of those waves. And the ocean doesn't work like that. If you're trying to draw a wave, if you're trying to paint a wave, it's very hard because it's hard to know where one wave starts and the next wave ends because they're all so connected. But I can see where one of your waves starts and the next wave ends. So I wonder if maybe we could do this a different way. And so, um, their scarves are on the ground in front of them and I go over to my shelf and I pull out and I say, I have something else that might be able to help us with the wave. 
And that's when I pull out my stretchy band. And then they're like freaking out because they love the stretchy band. <laughs> but I say, you know what? This looks sort of like what I would expect a wave to look like because you know, if you ever go to the ocean or the beach, you can see waves roll and they move and I sort of motion some of it and then I say, and waves can go stretched out and waves can sort of bunch together and water can swish around all different ways. And that's so great. And I say, you know, I've got my stretchy band. This can be like the connected wave. And so I have my stretchy band, a nice big circle. And what I say is, you know, maybe you're gonna get a part that's bunched up. Maybe you're gonna get a part that's pulled tight. Either way, it's totally fine. Because you know, there's that one kid who the whole time is like doing this, <laughs> you know, like trying to like bunch it all together. And so I, I always try and preempt the things that like I know are gonna annoy me later, or I know that are gonna cause a stress. I always try and preempt it with, and here's what you should do if that happens, <laughs> basically. But anyway, um, so I, I get my stretchy band. They all have their waves sitting on the ground and I say, I need you to take your wave and hold it in your lap for right now. So they take their scarf and they hold it in their lap. And then I bring the stretchy band into the circle and I say, don't touch yet. And I make a big circle in front of them. And then when I step back, I say, you know what that, it looks sort of like a pond or a lake. It looks like if you're looking from space or looking from a plane, it's like we're seeing that from the top because it's just a big circle in front of them. I say, but our pond is empty. Why don't you take your wave ball it up and throw it inside. So then we have a big, the stretchy band, and then all of the scarves are inside. I do that for a couple reasons. One, it looks cool. And it connects them with like the wave, the water inside the stretchy band. The other thing I like is that then it's out of their hand and they're not touching it. Because if you leave the scarf in their hand and then also give them this, whoosh, they're gone. So <laughs> this sort of lessens one of the things that they can play with and mess with. So they throw that in and they don't grab on, and I, once they've thrown in, I say, okay, now when we grab on, remember, stretchy band, it's connected, just like the waves. So if you move, the person next to you is gonna move, we have gotta be very careful. And so then we grab on to the stretchy band, and then we start, and I say, all right, let's, before we even start, let's practice, because you know it's gonna go up, go down, go all around, go in, go out go all about. Now, they love it. But one of the reasons I do it before the music starts is because when we're doing this with the stretchy band, up, down are fine. And I, I they go up and down fast. And so I'm like, oh, we gotta go slow. You know, this whole lesson is that, <laughs> just that reminder, basically. And then when they go in and then they go out, that's where the problems always happen because the out with the stretchy band, they start feeling the tension on the band and they start pulling and they're like, oh, and then there's always the kid who does this, who like falls over. <laughs> or I've also had kids do like this and I don't want that. And so I say, you can pull back, but you can't fall over. So go back as far as you can without falling over. And that seems to take care of some of the issues, but you know, like those two kids who you're always watching, they're still gonna fall over. I mean, like, that's just what they're gonna do. So, um, I try and, again, I try and plan on some of that stuff happening and then talk about it before it does and give them a strategy to be like, and here's what you should do instead. <laughs> you know, like, can't fall over because in a second you're gonna have to come back in and do your wave again. You know, so um, then, of course, we go back through the song and we do it with um, the stretchy band instead of um, our scarves. They love it, it is an instant hit. And what's really cool is that the more times you're like, it's not going fast, These, it's not, a, it's not a stormy wave, it's not you know, a wave in a hurricane, it's a gentle wave. And they really do slow down. And I think feeling the rubber inside here and feeling the tension helps. And it, it's just a great experience and it's like perfect for this song. Um, before I show you the xylophone part, which I think is also really cool, I wanted to just show you this stretchy band. So this stretchy band comes from a company called um, Bear Paw Creek. You can find them online and I'll put a link in the comments um, in a minute. But the reason I love this stretchy band is it is not a normal stretchy band. A normal stretchy band is just a big circle and you can get like a small one or a medium one or a big one. This one's called a connect to stretchy band. And I don't know why they haven't always been making them like this, but they actually come in segments. So you can get one little piece. And then on the end is, um, get close here is a little connector so guess what if there's like one kid 
who's having big time troubles, I can get him with like three other good kids and put them on a little mini band if I want it. Or if I have like a super ginormous class, like, oh no, I have to take half of art because the art teacher's out or whatever. Well, I have a couple extras and I can click them in and it makes the band a lot bigger. If you have a smaller group, you can make it smaller. The other cool thing they have, and guess what? Because we're sort of on an ocean kick right now, we're gonna end up doing some octopus stuff in the next couple weeks because they make this little hub, this little connector, and it has all the little connectors on it. So you can connect in, bam. And so now I have um, a way to do like a long part here. And this has what, I think 16? 12, <laughs> I can't count. It has 12 little connectors. So you could have up to 12 bands, or if you only had six, you could connect this side here and connect the next side here, and you could make loops, you could make flowers, you could make whatever. This is like so many Ava cool. Ava and Kara, please report to Ms. Brooks' room. Ava and Kara, go to Ms. Brooks' room. Still at school. Um, you can connect things, you can do just so many cool options. And then, I mean, if you wanted, you could tie scarves onto here, you could do whatever. But just the fact that it comes apart makes it like a bajillion times easier and more exciting to use. Um, so I just love that it does that and there are lots of options for that. But I'll, I'll put the link on there. If, you, if you're rearing to go right now, you wanna see it. It's called um, a Connect a Stretchy Band from Bear Paw Creek. But I'll put the link in there for you to find it later. And also this is like so super cool. I think they make a smaller and larger version of this hub. Maybe I, maybe I don't remember, <laughs> but it's super cool. And I have, uh, you know, I think that I have four connected together for my class, maybe five in there, but I mean, really, you can you can call them and ask them like how many would you need for a class or whatever, but they're, they're pretty good about helping you figure that out. And then the bands, I mean, also the other cool thing is like, if you're like, I can't, my budget won't sustain a whole thing. Well then get a piece this year, get a next piece next year, get, you know, have a parent donate a part of the band or whatever, and you can, add on to this infinitely and forever. Okay, but I love that stretchy band and I wanted to share that. So the last thing I do with this song, um, we do the scarves, we do the stretchy band in like, in one class. It really doesn't take that long, the song's pretty short. Um, and then the other thing I like to do, and this is another thing that Lynn put in the book, I would have never thought of this, I don't know why, but um, you know, it, on the next page, it, it gives you, um, in here, it gives you the song, it gives you the movement suggestions, and it does actually suggest a stretchy band, but I like doing it with scarves first. Um, and then it gives you ideas for orf exploration. So I've got my alto xylophone here, and um, you can totally give a kid mallets, and you can do, the waves go up, the waves go down, the waves go rolling on. You could have them roll just in one place, or you could have them roll all around. I don't know, it's up to you, or, you know, and then the waves go in, the waves go out. Now, all of the bars are on here because it's easier to do the glissando when you don't have, you know, like pentatonic, right? Plus, also, this is really an exploration song, and I don't care if it's in the key or the pentatone or whatever. That doesn't really matter to me. What matters more is that kids are exploring and they're following sort of the direction of the song and the direction of the melody sometimes and, um, and going in. This is difficult to do, so I'm not asking them to go. That's hard. So if they can just sort of mimic going in and going out, I don't care if they change a bar with every time. That doesn't matter to me. Um, but the waves go up, the waves go down, the waves go rolling all around, the waves go in, the waves go out, the waves go rolling all about, and then it goes, they're up, they're down, they're in, they're out. You could even do a glissando there if you wanted, but why not vary it with something more like that? You could do yarn mallets, you could do wooden mallets, you could do rubber mallets, whatever you think matches, but remember, the other cool thing is because you're saying it's a slow song, it's a calm song, they shouldn't do this. You know, that's too hard and it doesn't match the character of the song. So I love this. And the other cool thing is that the way the recording works is it goes all the way through once, there's an interlude, and then it goes again. So you can have two kids ready at the instrument. One goes the first time on the interlude, they switch. Second kid goes the next time. 
What are the rest of your kids doing? Well, if you have only a few instruments, the other kids can be doing scarf stuff. The other kids can be doing stretchy band if you trust them with that. I would probably trust them better with scarves. You could have them with finger puppets. You could have them doing whatever. I've got some really cool fish finger puppets. I mean, there are lots of options. But I just love that you can incorporate that and it's like perfect for exploration. So there are three, you know, a bunch of ways you can do this. And in the book, Lynn talks about the stretchy band. But I love starting with the scarves because I think the scarves because they're independent, you don't have kids you're pulling and having troubles, if that's a trouble thing. And this sort of works out some of that stress before you even get to the stretchy band. So this sort of presets like slow and calm and whatever and the mood of the song before you get to the stretchy band because the stretchy band is where you're gonna have the most management issues. And so to deal with some of that, to deal with the character and setting everything up before you even get there, is worth the time. Plus also it's fun to talk about waves and have them do scarves and things in a different way. You could maybe do it with ribbon wands, but I feel like scarves are a lot easier and I wanna have another fun activity that includes scarves. So if you are just now joining and you miss and you have questions, um, I'm gonna post this video in just a second and you can go back and see everything I did with the scarves and everything I did with the stretchy band and then also the um, the pitch percussion exploration um, and uh, if you have questions you can leave them in the comments but like I said because not everybody has this I'll put the link to this in the comments Lynn's stuff is is really cool and like I'm not getting paid by Lynn to say this like I, I went to her workshops and I was like I need to buy her book she's really good <laughs> so um, I'll put the link to this in there and then also this really super cool stretchy band um, that comes apart and connects so that you can make it whatever size you want. Um, it's called a Connect to Stretchy Band from Bear Paw Creek, and I will put this in the comments as well so you can see that. But if you have questions or you're like, did that really work, you know, or, or whatever, let me know um, and put those in the comments and I'll answer those. Thanks so much for coming and uh, watching today. Uh, I'll be back soon with a few more instrument exploration ideas for you and a little bit more. Thanks so much. Have a good night.